Hello, and welcome to this GameDev.TV online training course in two-dimensional digital drawing for concept art, storyboarding, and character design. In this episode, we are going to be learning about light, and specifically, how light interacts with color and creates form within a drawing. A side note, I, I've gone and created my canvas already, and I have chosen a cinematic 16 by 9 aspect ratio. You can see that the image is not standard shape, it's, it's stretched horizontally, making it appear more dramatic. Now, in this video, we are going to be focusing on light, but very quickly, first, we have to block out our basic drawing. This will require composing the image, and I will go through the basics of creating a composition. However, for a more in-depth explanation, please watch my video on the topic. I am going to start the way I always do, with a rule of thirds grid. You can import a template, but I'm just going to quickly draw one using the Critter in-house ruler. Using the rule of thirds is important when planning a composition, as it enables us to build narrative into our images. This image is going to contain a speeding bike, and I'm going to suggest movement within the image by placing the main subject of the image, this lamppost, just beyond the third line, therefore implying a journey travelled within the image through the negative space. There will be times where you may want to place the subject in the centre or close to the top, but by following the rule of thirds, the image will be more pleasing to the eye out of the box. To draw, I am going to be using the airbrush tool, and I will be using only the airbrush tool for the duration of this project. I find that jumping between tools, whilst it can be effective and can save time in certain circumstances, can easily produce an incoherent image if used incorrectly. And ultimately, a single tool should be sufficient to finish an image, as all textures are created merely out of points of colour. Now, at this stage, we are simply blocking out the colours, and we don't need to be too detailed with how we are doing this. Really enjoy the opportunity to create a drawing that looks very simple and not, not particularly very good, to be honest. We're just blocking out the blue of the sky. I'm imagining that it's a clear day, some slightly overcast uh, moments, um, that no, no visible sun. The desert is beige. The grey line running across the bottom of the screen is going to be the road. We have our trusted lamp standing there, and to its side, its partner in crime, a gnarled old tree. Once you have blocked in the basic colours, add some quick shadow on the tree, drawing the shadows below the clumps of leaves and branches. We are drawing the shadows below the branches because the light source in this instance is the sky. The lamp isn't on yet, it's still daytime. And the major lesson we need to learn at this stage is that shadow only occurs on the opposite side of an object from the side with which it is being hit with light. Light is hitting the tree from above, therefore shadows occur below. Now, I'm going to add in the subject for my scene, my speeding bike. I'm just inventing a design as I go. It's a mono wheel with just the front wheel pulling along the weight of the bike behind it, which is hovering above the ground. I know it looks rough. Stay with me. Things are about to change dramatically. Right, so I've finished my basic drawing. Let's change the scene. Let's make it night time. I'm now going to make a new layer and use the area fill tool. Now, I know I said I would only be using one tool, but I'm a bit lazy. So I'm going to be using two and I'm going to colour the layer in dark blue. The reason I'm using dark blue goes back to the Impressionists. They were the masters of painting with colour, and they suggested that there is colour in shadow, and they had a bit of a point. Black is, to use a dictionary definition, the absence of all light, and as there is light at night, I'm applying a dark blue filter. That's way too blue. Adjust the opacity. Okay. 
When you're happy with the results, you can now see more clearly why I didn't worry about the details in my early drawing. I'm glad I blocked out the colour, as we can still make out the slight yellow of the desert and the green of the tree, but it has been dull significantly. All the time when we're drawing, we're trying to simulate the real world, specifically how colour works, so that the scene is believable to somebody else. I also specifically chose the soft edged airbrush tool, and it's important that I did, because details, such as sharp objects, are created through contrasting colours, and where there is an absence of light, such as between the mountains and the sky in the background of this image, the edge will appear softened when there is no light to highlight the edge of the mountain. After creating a new layer, and now going back to our light sources, we're going to plot out the direction of the light so that we can accurately place the light later on. This will not be in the finished article. This is for our own benefit whilst we're drawing. I'm going with a brilliant tungsten orange for the lamp. I love this colour. And for the bike, I'm using a crisp teal blue. You can use whatever colour you want. I'm just going with these colours as the orange makes sense to me. And I was listening to a podcast the other day that said the future of UI is blue. And as I want this drawing to look familiar and iconic to my audiences, I'm following tradition and using blue light for the bike. Now let's lower the opacity of our cursor for this next period. Better to work with a low opacity and build up the light through layers. And we're going to start by showing the light radiating away from the lamppost. The signs of light we can see that's light catching dust. You can't just see light unless it's hitting something, so the orange will be fainter when it's in the air. Light becomes less powerful as it travels also, so make your marks fainter as they move further away from the source. And keep within those light parameters we set earlier. And now, the light is hitting the ground, so even though it had disappeared in the air, it's going to reappear once it hits a solid object. Moving on to the tree, we're going to start painting in the highlights, paying close attention to the angle of the light. You can build form by making areas lighter. The lighter the area, the greater the contrast, the sharper the object must be. I'm imagining gnarled knots pointing out of the boughs catching the light. And at this point, you might be wondering, why are we drawing in orange, not green? The tree was green. Well. Light has an inherent colour to it. Kelvins are the measurement which gauges how warm or cold light is. So a warm light, such as this lamp post, is capable of painting the object it is hitting in a warm light also. So the scene we were painting at the beginning, that was lit with natural daylight, and therefore the colours were very vibrant. There's a reason why painters like working with natural daylight. But at night, and under tungsten light, the green of the leaf doesn't stand much of a chance, although you can see glimpses of green in the shadow. I'm going to place the shadow at the foot of the lamppost now, so as to blend it in more with the ground. And I'm going to place a shadow along the curb because it's also not being hit by the light. Moving on to the light from the bike, as you can see, I'm placing the light and following the trajectory of the light, the cast of the light. For the bike, I'm going to be placing streams of light from the bike's lights. That's because it's closer to the dusty roads, so the light is hitting more particles than the lamppost was. And also because I just imagine this is a more powerful light. An important point to remember when drawing light is to consider what is the surface that is being illuminated. The lamppost, which is painted with a glossy black, in my imagination is very reflective, so it will take on the blue light very easily. The tree, on the other hand, is made from a more porous substance and is going to absorb more light. And if I was if it was a darker colour, it might take on less of the light thrown at it. But as it was a fairly pale brown and it's close to the light, it's going to absorb it and be bright nonetheless. 
Notice that I am straying slightly out of my light guidance. That is because I expect that there will be a small amount of light bleed coming from these light sources. Now that I've drawn out the light, I can reassess the composition, and I think I would like it to be a little darker. I want this scene to be really dramatic. I want to focus the eye's attention to the action, so I'm going to go around and darken the parts of the scene that are less important to what's happening in the scene. A few last finishing touches. I'm going to add an infrared signal here on the bike. And, and yes, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, we're done. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson in drawing with light. This is the GameDev.TV online training course in two-dimensional digital drawing for concept art, storyboarding, and character design. See you next time.